even half of it is true, then he's toast. I mean, it's a it's a pretty it's a very detailed indictment, uh, and it's very very damning. And this idea of presenting Trump as a victim here, a victim of a witch hunt, uh, is ridiculous. Trump's former attorney general, Bill Barr, did not miss words about the seriousness of his indictment. And it's not just Bill Barr. Here's what former Trump national security advisor John Bolton had to say. This is a devastating indictment. I speak here as an alumnus of the Justice Department myself, uh, because not only is it powerful, it's very narrowly tailored. They didn't throw everything up against the wall to see what would stick. Uh, this really is a rifle shot, and I, I think it's, uh, it should be uh, the end of Donald Trump's political career. Let's discuss with former Democratic Congressman Connor Lamb and former Republican Congressman Charlie Dent, both from the state of Pennsylvania. Charlie, when cameras are off, what are you hearing from Republicans? Uh, what I'm hearing is they want Donald Trump to go away. Uh, they know these indictments are going to be devastating for the Republican Party in a general election should Donald Trump become the nominee. Uh, this is just, there's, this is all bad news. I mean, some of the, the MAGA wing guys, the really hardcore MAGA wing folks, you know, they all, they're all, they all believe their own BS and, <laughs> and think that this is somehow going to help them in the polls, certainly may, maybe among the base, uh, but they're not really dealing with reality. For those of us who are more traditional or conventional politicians, we know that the indictments are just devastating politically. But in this upside down world of uh, politics today, some people uh, think just the opposite. Connor, where are the Republicans in the Senate? Mitch McConnell, dead silent. Chuck Grassley, who has been in the Senate for decades, says he has not even read the indictment. How is that even acceptable for his constituents that the former president and Republican frontrunner is facing criminal charges? And Chuck Grassley, he didn't get around to reading it. What else could he have been reading this weekend? Well, if I'm if not mistaken, Senator Grassley is in his 90s and the voters of Iowa have been sending him there for decades at this point. And these guys like him and McConnell, you know, they've been there so long. They are so out of touch. They just believe they can get away with everything. Um, you know, look at the way McConnell handled January 6th to, to make this, you know, sort of speech of righteous indignation and then turn around and kill every attempt we made to actually impose accountability for it. That's the everyone is is going with their standard playbook at the moment. Um, but these are not standard times. And, and I think the clips you showed as we came in of Bill Barr finally, after all these years, stepping up and doing the right thing, to me, that's mirrored in the electorate. Every time Trump does another bad thing, he's pulling his people a little further away from that middle voter that's going to decide the elections against him and his party. And that's what Bill Barr and, and John Bolton, they represent those types of people out there in America who, who are finally going to turn away from Trump. Well, I would just say two things. First, I have to fact check you. Chuck Grassley is 89, not 90. Oh. <laughs> and, and Bill Barr may be representing those people now, but we cannot forget that he was Donald Trump's human shield for the majority of the time that he was the attorney general. And of course, he wrote a four-page memo summarizing the Mueller report, which was by no means a summary of anything. He rewrote it to serve Donald Trump. Charlie, let's listen to what some of Donald Trump's rivals for the 2024 nomination are saying. I think there needs to be one standard of justice in this country. Let's enforce it on everybody and make sure we all know the rules. I'm deeply troubled to see this indictment move forward. You can't protect Democrats while targeting and hunting Republicans. This case is a serious case with serious allegations. But in America, you're still innocent until proven guilty. You're a politician, not me, Charlie. Can you walk me through the political calculus? None of these people are running against Joe Biden yet. Their number one target, their front runner, is Donald Trump. Should they not be taking the, the, the lane that Chris Christie is, which taking using everything they can to knock Donald Trump out so they could get the nomination? They've got the opening. Yeah, they, they need to start running for first place, not second place. Uh, it, look, any, it, all these campaigns are about drawing a sharp contrast. When your opponent 
your opponent in an election is indicted, you know, for mishandling classified materials, you can smash him from the right, that he's a threat to national defense. Uh, you can go down the long list of things that uh, you just want to nail him on. And, and, and frankly, the biggest argument, he's just too great a risk. I don't know why they won't say this. I mean, they're try they think somehow they're not going to, they they're afraid they're going to alienate Trump voters by criticizing Tr Donald Trump. I think they have to take him on much more frontally and directly as Chris Christie has. And I think even Nikki Haley, you know, took a little bit of a poke at the bear today, too. Uh, so some of them are speaking up a bit, but I, it, it, I think it's, it's a act of political malpractice not to condemn Trump for this. Some of them also defended him uh, during the Alvin Bragg issue over the uh, hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. Again, makes no sense politically as far as I'm concerned. Draw the sharp contrast. You're not going to beat him by, uh, by uh, you know, tacitly defending him. She took a little bit of a poke. Let's watch that. Nikki Haley. Yeah. If this indictment is true, if what it says is actually the case, President Trump was incredibly reckless with our national security. Chris Christie said the same, Connor. Is that the right move, the position she's taking? I mean, you know, she should be going a lot further, just like Charlie said, not only for the political reasons, but for history, right? I mean, all these people have kids and a lot of them have grandkids. Uh, they want their legacy to be that they did the right thing when the country needed them to do it. And so far, virtually none of them are doing that. I guess Nick, Nikki Haley went a small inch in that direction. But, you know, the other thing I think is my understanding of the Trump voters I've met through the years in my own district was one of the things they really liked about Trump is they thought he wasn't afraid of anything or anyone, and he would always say what he really believed. Um, and you can tell with every single one of the people that you just showed that they don't really believe what they're saying and that what they believe is what Charlie said at the opening is that they want him out of the way and they're finding the most tactful way to do it, which marks them as a typical politician and I think ultimately will spell their demise in this primary. That's a really good point. I know I'm out of time. You guys are coming back after the break, but I do want to ask quickly, Charlie, Charles Koch, who's got all that money, uh, billionaire mega donor, his super PAC is now putting money behind digital ads targeting Trump. How big of a deal is that? I think it's significant, but I, there was never any love lost between uh, the Kochs and Donald Trump uh, because uh, the, the, the Kochs actually, whether you like them or not, they were very principled people. They had a very clear agenda, and they saw Donald Trump as very transactional and unprincipled, and, and I, I, I'm not at all surprised that they're taking on Donald Trump or Charles Koch is. Well, one could say their principles. They represent a set yeah. of principles right. for them, but not necessarily for the American people.